Good evening, everybody. Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It is Tuesday evening, December 25th, 2018, and it's Christmas night. Hope you all are having a great day. Hope you all have had a Merry Christmas and are ready for some picks and predictions. As you see on the paper in front of you, I already have a couple of games that I've chosen winners on against the spread. Uh, we'll dive into those right away. Made a little editing snafu, so... Uh, got to go with what we got. Boise State taking on Boston College in the First Responder Bowl. This is tomorrow in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. Uh, I'm taking Boise State here to cover the two-and-a-half point spread that they are favored by here. I just think Boise State is a little bit better of a team and a little bit better shape right now. Boston College, pretty one-dimensional on offense with the uh, A.J. Dillon uh, you never know if he's really going to be hurt or if he's going to be healthy or uh, if he's going to be playing at all. Boston, or, uh, Boston College is uh, <clears throat> from the ACC, 7-5, and 10-3 and three is Boise State, and they were number 22 versus the run in the country. That's all that uh, Boston College does is run the football. I'm going to take Boise State here to cover the spread against the Eagles. Minnesota versus Georgia Tech in the Quick Lane Bowl. That's tomorrow night in Detroit at Ford Field. Um, taking uh, Georgia Tech to cover the five and a half points that they are laying against the Golden Gophers. Minnesota, six and six. Georgia Tech, seven and five. Coach Paul Johnson. Uh, this is his last game as head coach of the Yellow Jackets tomorrow night. He's retiring after this one. It'll be the last time we see the triple option, perhaps, uh, with the Georgia Tech team. Uh, if you're looking at them, <clears throat> they are... The number one team in the country uh, running the football, 334 yards a game. No surprise there. That's what they do. Um, Minnesota's run defense, number 75 in the country. They have had a uh, kind of quarterback by committee thing with Minnesota so far this year. And amongst those four guys, they've thrown 14 interceptions. 14 interceptions. <laughs> Not good at all. And they're very... Uh, I would say the word here, inconsistent. They had lost to Illinois earlier in the year, 55-31. How do you give up 55 points to Illinois, first of all? Second of all, how do you lose to them by 24 points? I don't know. Go ask Minnesota. They did it. 55-31. Then a few weeks later, they beat Purdue 41-10. to And that was a Purdue team that was coming off a big victory over Ohio State. So I don't know. These guys are all over the place. <clears throat> I don't trust them. In this game, I think Taquan Marshall and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in the last game for good old PJ and the last game with the triple option will run all over the Golden Gophers and cover that five and a half point spread. Uh, getting into tomorrow night, California versus TCU in the Cheez It Bowl. This is uh, taking place in. Uh, Phoenix, I think it is. Uh, this one used to be called the Cactus Bowl, perhaps. I'm not sure. Well, she's at sponsoring it now. Uh, TCU actually won their last two games to finish up 6-6. Six and six. If you'll remember at the first part of the uh, season, go all the way back to the 1st of September, or middle of September, actually. They were taking on Ohio State uh, in like week three or week four, I think. It was the first time Urban Meyer was allowed back on the sidelines for them or something. I don't remember, and uh, that was a big game. Um, it was a, it was a good game. Uh, they lost it though, but it was a good game. Ever since then, they have absolutely went south. Uh, their quarterback hurt. Uh, I think he's transferring after this year. Um, is over with, or he may already be gone. Sean Robinson is that his name? Uh, I don't know. But uh, California's defense, number sixteen overall in the country, that's pretty good for a Pac-12 team. Uh, they played well, and uh, they beat some decent teams. They actually beat Washington this year. TCU's dealt with a lot of injuries. I don't really know who's going to be the quarterback in this game. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'm picking California here to cover the spread. Uh, they're one-point favorites right now. I say they win it and win it by more than that. Just more significant margin there. Uh, Baylor versus Vanderbilt in the Texas Bowl. Two six and six teams going up and see each other. If you look at their stats, they're really evenly matched. Uh, so it's hard to find an edge there. Uh, their quarterback, Charlie Brewer, for uh, Baylor, 17 touchdowns this year, 
Uh, eight interceptions, around 2,600 yards passing. So they like to throw the ball. Uh, but Vanderbilt's got their own Kyle Shermer, 23 touchdowns and uh, seven interceptions. So a few more touchdowns there for uh, Mr. Shermer. Of course, Baylor out of the Big 12, Vanderbilt out of the SEC. Uh, if you kind of look at these two teams, and our schedule, if you want to break it down that way and look at uh, <clears throat> what they've done this year. Um, Baylor, out of their six wins, have come against Abilene Christian, UT San Antonio, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, that's the feather in their cap, and Texas Tech. You know, only, you know, one of those teams, uh, Oklahoma State, had a winning record. Um, I, I don't know about Abilene Christian. The, the jury's still out on that one. I don't even know where that is. But at any rate, they haven't beaten very good teams. So I lost to Duke. Uh, Oklahoma blew them out. West Virginia blew them out. I mean, you get the drill here. So Vanderbilt, when I'm looking at them and their losses, this is a team that, you know, with one player on offense and maybe one player on defense, one difference maker on each side of the ball, it could have been like a 10-2 and two team. They got blown out by Georgia, uh, especially in the second half, ran away with that one. And uh, my South Carolina, my Gamecocks, handled them by 21 points. But other than that, Missouri was a loss. They lost that game by like three points. They lost to Kentucky by a touchdown. They lost to Florida by just a few points. And they lost to Notre Dame by just a handful of points. I mean, this is a team that could easily, easily be a nine or ten win team, you know, if, if things had gone their way. So uh, I'm just going to look at that. I'm going to have to tell you, Vanderbilt here is going to cover the spread against Baylor, and they're going to take them boys to the woodshed. I'm sorry. Even though it is in Texas, it doesn't give them a home, uh, home state advantage, home field advantage, whatever you want to call it. Vanderbilt covers the spread there. Temple versus Duke. Uh, Independence Bowl. Temple is laying three and a half against the Duke Blue Devils. Now, the Temple... Um, they're number 34 overall on defense. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't really thought that when we are talking about Temple and Duke, 82nd. Uh, Temple uh, quarterback Anthony Russo on the year, 13 touchdowns, but he's also thrown 13 interceptions. They got another quarterback, Frank Newtow, who backs him up. He used to be the starter. Russo took his job from him. Not sure if that was a good thing or not. 2,335 yards for Anthony Russo, Raquel Armstead. About 1,100 yards on the ground for the Temple Owls and 13 touchdowns. So uh, they're pretty prolific there. Uh, Temple was the one team that did take down the Cincinnati Bearcats when they were undefeated. And you're looking at their schedule and what they've done this year. They either blew teams out or they played them close. Uh, I mean, there was, there was not a lot of middle ground there. Uh, the first game of the season, they lost to Villanova. Villanova, it was a five-win team from the SCS that was shut out two times. They lost to them, though. Uh, looking at Duke, quarterback Daniel Jones, uh, he's a 17-touchdown guy, 2,251 yards through the air. They also got Deion Jackson to turn two on the ground, rushed for 806 yards and seven touchdowns. Duke's got five wins over bowl teams this year, being that uh, Northwestern, uh, Baylor, the aforementioned team, Georgia Tech, Miami, and... Army, uh, early in the season. A lot of people forget that. Army won 11 games this year. Their season's already wrapped up, but uh, Duke beat them. They did. Um, I think Duke's a team here with a little bit more talent, and uh, I think they covered the spread here, and uh, I think they're going to win this game. Uh, a lot of people counting them out. They did have a really, really bad loss to Wake Forest in the last game of the regular season. Uh, kind of inexplainable there. Unexplainable, but uh, <clears throat> at any rate. We'll just chalk that one up to just having a bad day. And we're going to go with the Blue Devils in this one. Uh, Miami versus Wisconsin. What do we call this? The uh, failure to live up to expectations bowl, I guess. Both teams 7-5. and five. Uh, Both of them are ranked inside the top 10 this year when things kicked off. But uh, they didn't start that, start that way. They didn't finish up that way, did they? Pinstripe Bowl. Uh, New York at Yankee Stadium. So it's supposed to be 39 degrees Thursday for this game. So that's much more conducive to Wisconsin than it is for Miami. However, 39 degrees for uh, Wisconsin, they might feel like they're in a heat wave. Uh, Miami got number two overall defense in the country. 
So for a seven and five team, that's kind of head scratching. Uh, they're number 25 versus the run though. Uh, if you look at their losses uh, this year, out of those five, uh, lost to Boston College, gave 149 yards to A.J. Dillon. Uh, lost to Georgia Tech, gave up 91 yards rushing to Tokwan Marshall. That's not a, uh, you know, that's not a surprise. Uh, lost to Duke, Deion Jackson, lost. He gave up uh, over 100 to him. And uh, lost to LSU, gave up 125 yards to Nick Brosett. One I'm trying to build towards here is Jonathan Taylor for Wisconsin. Guy's got almost 2,000 yards rushing this year and 15 touchdowns. I think he pounds Miami under submission, and uh, they give up a few points, give up a few rushing touchdowns and a few rushing yards, and I think that Wisconsin wins this game, covers that spread. Give me the Badgers in the pinstripe bowl to take down the terrible canes. Oh, dibby, dibby, dibby. All right. Purdue versus Auburn. Uh, this is the Music City Bowl in Nashville, and Auburn is laying three and a half in this one. Purdue, six and six. Auburn, seven and five on the year. Number 24 uh, rated offense is what Purdue is with David Blau. Senior quarterback, 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions, about 3,500 yards through the air this year. Um, when he throws it, he'll usually go to Rondell Moore's. Got 1,164 yards receiving on the year, and they have a young man named DJ Knox on the ground who will run. He's got about 868 yards rushing. The uh, Boilermakers had 0-3 start, so they're kind of slow starting out of the gate. Lost to Eastern Michigan. Missouri and uh, Northwestern, but they've rebounded from that. They beat Ohio State 49-20 earlier in the year. Um, they beat Iowa. Uh, they ended up losing um, to, uh, who was that? Wisconsin? Maybe, I don't know. They didn't win their side of the, uh, of the Big Ten which I thought that they were uh, they were destined to do that, but they didn't. They lost 41-10 to a Minnesota team. That's really not that good either. I thought Purdue was a lot more talented than that. But it speaks volumes for where their program's going. Jeff Brom, their head coach, turned down his alma mater, Louisville, said, I'm staying at Purdue. And uh, what he will do. Um, Auburn, things are going right. Jared Stidham can get hot. They can score some points. They will be able to run the football, but let's look at this one. I think this one just means a little bit more to Purdue than it means to Auburn. And I'm going to take the Boilermakers here to cover the spread in the Music City Bowl and quite possibly pull out a victory over the uh, Auburn Tigers. West Virginia versus Syracuse. Syracuse is laying one in this game. This is the uh, Camping World Bowl in uh, Orlando. And... If I can get my things together here, maybe I got some notes on that. Yeah, I do. West Virginia, <clears throat> no Will Greer. Uh, it's one that's uh, going ahead and skip this game. Protect his stock for the NFL draft. Uh, <clears throat> Syracuse missing a couple of defensive linemen uh, and a defensive back, all for personal reasons. Personal reasons. All right, what's that mean? I don't know. Uh, but you look at these teams, they're evenly matched too. Syracuse, 17th against offense, uh, 89th on defense. West Virginia's 7th ranked offense and 74th ranked defense. So uh, both teams will give up some yards and they'll score some points. Uh, Syracuse, though, is number 113 against the pass. Uh, how's that going to affect them in this game, though? West Virginia will be going with Jack Allison at quarterback. Jack is one for one this year. <laughs> one touchdown, one interception, 75 yards passing. That's it. So they don't have uh, a lot of experience under center other than Mr. Greer. So he chose to sit this game out. I don't know. That one sounds kind of selfish because uh, nobody else is really prepared for it. But that's what they got going on. Of course, they got David Sills who can catch some balls. And I think West Virginia is probably a little bit more talented overall. Syracuse's last bowl game they actually played in was the 2013 Pinstripe Bowl. 
with no Will Greer here, Will Greer here, that rhymes. I, I'm, I'm just going to lean towards Syracuse in this one. This is uh, another uh, another one where I just think it, the thing just means more to Syracuse than it does to West Virginia. Uh, yeah, West Virginia is always there on the cusp of, you know, you know, doing decent or, you know, they're usually will end up a season ranked. Um, Syracuse hadn't been ranked since, I don't know, I don't know when the last time they finished up rank was. Really, probably when Don Nab still played there a uh, long, long time ago. <clears throat> and I just think it means a little bit more to the Syracuse Orange and what it means to West Virginia. I think they're going to cover the spread there with no Will Greer at under center for West Virginia. Things could get ugly. Iowa State versus Washington State. Interesting matchup here. Washington State is laying three in the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. Iowa State comes in with a record of eight and four. Washington State comes in at ten and two. I think everybody uh, could see Washington State as uh, Pac-12 champs. Uh, didn't happen though. They lost uh, the rivalry week to Washington at home in the Apple Cup game. They got knocked off, and uh, Washington went on to play Utah in the Pac-12 championship. Uh, Washington State, of course, Gardner Minshew, 4,500 yards through the air, 36 TDs and nine interceptions uh, on the year Iowa State. They like to run the football. David Montgomery's got about 1,100 yards so far this year and uh, 12 touchdowns. Brock Purdy, quarterback, 16 TDs and five interceptions on the year. You know, I... Iowa State's not scared to play, uh, you know, those teams with that air raid type offense. They beat West Virginia this year. Uh, they lost to some good teams. Uh, if you want to look at it, Oklahoma beat them. Uh, Texas beat them. Uh, you know, it's not like they got embarrassed. Uh, Iowa State is one of those teams that just that – they're just there, and, and they exist, and, and they're going to beat uh, – they're going to beat the teams on their schedule they should beat. Uh, they may lose every now and then to one that they shouldn't lose to. But I guarantee you, they're going to screw somebody's season up just about every year. And they did that this year for West Virginia. Yeah, I guarantee you, if West Virginia had beat Iowa State, uh, they probably would have not ended up losing to Oklahoma State either. And they could have been an undefeated team. And I guarantee you that Will Greer would be playing in whatever game they're going to be in right now, if that had been the case. But it's not. Um, <clears throat> Washington State here, um, I think is just a little bit too talented and uh, is not going to be denied in this one. I think they're the better team, and I think they're going to cover the spread here, but I do think this one's going to be close. Give me Washington State and the three points in this one. All right, getting into Saturday, final day of the week of games. South Carolina Gamecocks. My Gamecocks taking on Virginia in the Belt Bowl. Both teams are 7-5, and five, and the Gamecocks are laying five and a half up the road in Charlotte at uh, the Bank of America Stadium. Uh, South Carolina, major losses uh, on both sides of the ball as far as injuries go this year, especially on defense. All that's been well noted. Uh, we know about all that, especially after the Clemson game. You know, when we thought we were going to uh, – get some players back and re be relatively healthy for the belt bowl. We find out we're going to lose our uh, big defensive lineman, Javon Kinlaw, uh, broken hip. He's got to go out and have some surgery on that. Uh, you got Keyshawn Nixon plays cornerback. He's got to be out for this game. Uh, he won't be there. We'll have about, about Ross and Allen Williams and uh, the, one of the players who made the SEC all-freshman team, J.C. Horn on defense for the Gamecocks. Debo Samuel, the uh, <clears throat> star wide receiver slash kick returner slash everything with South Carolina, going to be sitting this one out to protect his NFL draft stock. You know, that's been much bandied about. A lot of people talking about that one. That he's selfish. You know, he shouldn't do that. And a lot of Gamecock fans come to his defense, say, well, he's doing what he needs to. Here's my thing about that. If we were going into this game 100% healthy, you know, I have no question in my mind that we would blow Virginia out. And Debo, go ahead, man, sit down, take a rest, do your thing. But, you know, we've got a lot of players injured here. It's, it's the end of the season. A lot of people are beat up. And Virginia is, is a healthier team than we are right now. To me, I really think you should play. 
because, you know, it, it could be a difference maker. But that's just it. That's his decision, and that's him. Virginia lost three of the last four games. Uh, two of those were in overtime to Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Um, if we're looking at them, uh, they'll throw it with uh, Bryce Perkins. Turned it 2,472 yards this year, 22 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Uh, the Gamecocks will throw with Jake Bentley this year's 27 TDs and uh, 12 interceptions, about 2,953 yards. Uh, about 515 of those came against Clemson's elite defense. Uh, Virginia runs the ball. Jordan Ellis has rushed this year for nine touchdowns and 920 yards. Uh, overall, they're number 24 defense in the country, number 14 against the pass. Um, and uh, they got a couple of guys back here in the defensive backfield, Bryce Hall and Juan Thornhill, who will make some plays. I guess he is number one. He is the he is the one one Thornhill. That's an interesting name. Uh, Perkins is the kind of quarterback that could give Gamecock some trouble. Um, the kid I've watched him. Yeah, he's thrown twenty two touchdown passes this year. I don't know where they came from. The only game I really watched him play a lot of extended time in was that Virginia Tech game. Uh, and quite honestly, he lost that game for him. Uh, they you know were rallying from from being down by three. Um, whichever behind the whole first half, he brought them back, but then they got back down again and he, they was driving to uh, try to take the lead back very, very late in that game. Um, dude throws three passes uh, in succession. I have no idea who he was throwing it to. I don't know what it was. I don't know what the route was. It was just some kind of weird sideline route where he couldn't have hit water if he fell out of a boat with. I mean, they're some of the ugliest passes I saw in my life. He did throw one where the receiver of his made a really good break on it and a good play. Um, but he, he's got some wheels on him. He will take off. And that's the kind of guy that can give the Gamecocks some trouble. Uh, I'm going to pick Virginia to cover the spread here, but I think the Gamecocks are going to win this game by about three. I'm picking Boomcocks 34-31 to take the victory uh, in the belt. Whoops, the belt bowl. What am I doing there? Got to scratch y'all out. Don't want to scratch you out, but I'm going to have to there. Virginia, cover the spread in the belt bowl. Take the Cavaliers on that one. All right. Getting into some, uh, and this is one they call a New Year's Six Bowl, Florida and Michigan. It's not on New Year's Day. Peach Bowl. Florida, 9-3 versus Michigan, 10-2. Um, looking at these two. Um. Uh, Florida is uh, much weaker versus the run than they are against the pass. Uh, it doesn't fare well against the Michigan Wolverines. They have uh, Karam Higdon, 1,200 yards this year, uh, about 10 touchdowns on the ground. Of course, Shea Patterson has thrown 21 touchdown passes for the Wolverines, five picks, 2,364 yards on the year. Uh, when he throws the ball, his passes will usually be caught by Nico Collins and Donovan Peoples-Jones. Six TDs, seven TDs, respectively, uh, catching the ball. wonder how they fit that on a jersey. Peoples-Jones. That's one of those weird hyphenated last names that everybody's doing nowadays. But anyway, I mean, looking at these guys, Felipe Franks for Florida, 23 touchdowns, six interceptions on the year and 2,284 yards. Had no idea that his stats were actually that good. Uh, when I saw him play against my Gamecocks, I mean, he looked like uh, hot garbage for most of the game. But apparently, uh, you know, that Florida State game bumped up the stats a bit. I guess the Idaho game bumped him up a little bit for him. Uh, they like to run the ball a lot. 1,500 yards combined. Uh, the two young men, Michael Piran and uh, Jordan Scarlett, about 10 touchdowns on the ground. So these are two teams of rough, rugged, or solid. Michigan had a bookend season. They lost their first game. They lost their last game, but they won everything in the middle. Okay? And they're, they're going to be hungry. They're out to, uh, to prove that that smackdown that they got from Ohio State at the end of the year is not who they are. Uh, you know, they want to be 11-2. and two. You know, Jim Harbaugh needs a signature win in a bowl game to cap off a really good season to uh, right the wrong against Ohio State, and I think he's going to get it here. 
I can see Michigan covering the spread. I think they'll win this game by anywhere from a touchdown to 10 points. Florida, not a bad team. They're coming around. Obviously, they recruited really well this year. Um, they're ranked, I think it was number 17 the last time I looked. Uh, better than my Gamecocks. And the guy I was talking about on my recruiting video that I did the other night, Chris Steele, the cornerback from California, uh, is supposed to announce in a few days where he's going to go to college. Uh, word on the street from what I've heard is he's going to be picking the Florida Gators. So that's a big pickup for them. Um, good luck to that young man. You know, I mean, obviously he wants to – he wants to learn how to swing frying pans and steal credit cards or something with his college days. He doesn't want to go to South Carolina and learn from Coach Boom, learn from the best. That's fine. That's fine. We'll get us some more pickups somewhere else. Good luck to Chris Steele. But uh, anyway, he's not going to be a factor in this game. Michigan covers the spread there against the Florida Gators and win that game. So go ahead and bet something on it. All right. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one for last. Uh, Arkansas versus Nevada. Uh, we're one and a half point uh, favorites in the Arizona Bowl. Maybe this is the one that used to be the Cactus Bowl. I do not know. Anyway, Arkansas State, Rub Red Wolves, 8-4 and four on the season. Uh, Nevada, the Wolfpack, uh, coming in with a record of 7-5. and five. Uh... At Arkansas State won their last four games, so they were four and four coming in. They won their last four to finish up eight and four. Uh, yeah, this game being that Ar Nevada really doesn't have to travel that far, just a little bit south to, to Arizona to play in this game, although I really don't know how far that is. It might be like a five, six hundred mile trip uh, via airplane. Those are some big states out there. <laughs> Can you tell I'm not really interested in this one? Uh, go ahead. Uh, let me say Nevada. Cover the spread here against uh, Arkansas State. I really didn't spend a lot of time researching either one of those teams. All right. Let's get to games that make the most difference now for me and for you. Notre Dame versus Clemson. Cotton Bowl. College football playoff semifinal. I think it's interesting that the uh, – actual Cotton Bowl is being played in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, and the First Responder Bowl is being played in the Cotton Bowl. I can't figure that out! <laughs> Somebody explain that one to me. I guess where we can get more people in, right? Get more more glitz and glamour. Right? It's more, more prestigious to play in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, I guess, than to play in the old Cotton Bowl, even though that's what we're going to call it. If you want to do that, we should call this the Dallas Cowboys Bowl. Anyway, Clemson on the year 13-0 coming in. Notre Dame 12-0, both teams undefeated, obviously with those top records. Clemson is laying 12 and a half in this game. Trevor Lawrence, the freshman, 24 touchdowns, four interceptions, about 2,600 yards through the air this year. I think everybody pretty much figured he was probably going to do that, but I don't know that they knew that Travis Etienne would end up with 1,500 yards at this point in the season, 21 touchdowns, uh, absolutely obliterated Pittsburgh in the ACC championship game, which I think a lot of people uh, figured that they would do. Um, all ETN, when we'll look at him, all of his games, it's either he's had a big game or he's just he hasn't really rushed for a lot in any of those games. They didn't have a big game in his high, his, uh, high for the year. 203 yards versus Syracuse in uh, about week number five. Uh, Clemson, if you want to look at them overall in the country, their defense ranked number four. Their offense is ranked number four. Notre Dame's defense is 21st in the country, and their offense is number 28. And they made quite the turnaround when Ian Book took over as starting quarterback. Of course, uh, they were undefeated when Book took over as quarterback, uh, but they hadn't really put up any kind of eye-popping numbers and had kind of uh, – kind of flew under the radar and squeaked by some inferior teams, you know, uh, you know, a close win against Ball State at home, and then they had a, a close win at home against Vanderbilt, uh, which ended up being a pretty solid team. So Brian Kelly said he doesn't have enough of uh, their uh, uh, a former quarterback. My goodness, can't even think of his name. <laughs> anyway, uh, he doesn't have enough of him. And uh, 
I'll think of his name here in a minute. Y'all, it's on the tip of y'all's tongue. I know you know he is. But Ian Book, not he's, he's transferring by the way. Nineteen touchdowns on the season, six interceptions, about twenty four hundred and sixty eight yards through the air. Uh, on the ground, Dexter Williams rushed for nine hundred forty one yards and twelve touchdowns. So you know Notre Dame, looking at this, they can put up some numbers. They're not eye popping numbers. You know, they're not doing anything really impressive this year. You know, I, I heard on the radio the other day somebody talking about Notre Dame. Don't make, they don't make a lot of mistakes, and our team makes a lot of mistakes. Well, you know, between you know uh, Ian Book and this other kid, they've thrown about twelve interceptions on the season. So I make the argument that they do make mistakes. They do make mistakes. Um, th their schedule. You know, Syracuse was a team that uh, they were going to have. Uh, that was a big game for both teams. And, you know, Notre Dame blew them out. Syracuse didn't have a starting quarterback there. You know, they barely slid by a mediocre Pittsburgh team. They barely slid by a mediocre USC junior team out on the West Coast in their last game of the season. Yeah, I, I'm just not – their best win of the season was probably that win week one against the Michigan Wolverines. I'm just not that impressed with them. They're good. They're they're very good, and I think they're solid. But they're not elite. You know, they're not elite. And the, the the fact of the matter is, if if you know if Ohio State hadn't lost that game to Purdue, or you know if Georgia had somehow managed to slip up and beat Alabama in that SEC championship game. And, you know, then you have to have a reason to put Alabama in there. And Georgia, Notre Dame wouldn't even be sniffing this playoff game right now. So, you know, and looking at Clemson, you know, there's there's been some stuff uh, happened the past couple of days, a little bit of unrest with them. Uh, about three players tested positive for what they call a sliver of some banned substance. I mean, it might be steroids. Don't really know all the details of that, but it uh, looks like the big defensive lineman. Dexter Lawrence may be sitting this game out. You know, I really don't think it's going to make that much difference here uh, in this game, especially, of course, not points-wise. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I hate to say it, and I hate to do it, because you all know I don't want to, but I'm going to have to take the Tigers to cover the spread in this one. I mean, I really just do not think Notre Dame is that good. Uh, you know, hopefully they'll prove me wrong, but I, I don't see it happening. I do not see it happening. I think Clemson gets a win here, and I think in the second half it turns into uh, a relatively easy win. I just don't think that Notre Dame is the team that can uh, put them to that kind of test at this point in time. All right, last game of the night. Oklahoma versus Alabama, Orange Bowl. In Miami, Florida, college football playoff semifinals will be coming to you from, what's it called, the Hard Rock Cafe or Car Hard Rock Hard Rock Stadium, whatever it is, in Miami. Um, Alabama is laying 14 against the Oklahoma Sooners, who's coming in at 12-1. and one. Of course, Alabama undefeated coming in at 13. Uh, Brandon Wimbush, that's the kid's name. There we go. Just come on top of my head. Um Alabama this year, you know, they're they're used to covering these big spreads. They've had a lot of them this year, and they've covered eight of them. Um, Oklahoma, of course, the number one offense in the country. Um, I did that despite losing their uh, number one running back coming into the season, Rodney Anderson. He got hurt very early in the year, and uh, you know, they they haven't missed a beat there. Um, Kyler Murray, of course, won the Heisman Trophy. Uh, earlier in the month of uh, in the month of January, <clears throat> we're looking at him. Um, you know, just I don't have his numbers written down here. Yeah, I do. Forty touchdowns, seven interceptions, four thousand and fifty three yards through the air um, on the ground. They get it done. Uh, Trey Sermon and uh, his mate back there in the backfield, about two thousand yards, twenty four touchdowns on the ground. That's unbelievable. I mean, that's just that's some eye-popping numbers on uh, offense for Oklahoma. Of course, with Alabama, Tua Tagovailoa, 37 touchdowns, four interceptions on the year. Hope I pronounced that right. 
Everybody has their own way of pronouncing it, though, so I don't know if one is correct and one's not. 3,353 yards through the air. Um, Jerry Judy is the one who's been a reception of a lot of his uh, passes, 12 touchdown passes on the year, and 1,100 and something yards receiving. Some people are saying he's the best wide receiver in America. Uh, I dispute that. I think Debo Samuel, plays for the Gamecocks, is. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, whatever. Uh, on the ground, they get it done with the Harris brothers. Uh, Damian Harris and Najee Harris together combined 1,400 yards and 11 touchdowns. Josh Jacobs also 11 touchdowns on the ground and about somewhat north of 500 yards rushing. Um, so this is going to be a battle of, you know, you know, that Alabama defense is legitimate. I mean, I think that they uh, – have held, you know, they've held some really high-powered teams down this year. Talk about the Missouri, Missouri, the uh, Missouri Tigers hold them 10 points. You know, they held um, Alabama, not uh, Mississippi, Ole Miss. You know, held them, you know, to a lot of single digits, like 10 points or something in that game. They scored on the first play of the game, and I don't think they did again. I mean, they have held some really prolific offenses down this year, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it against Oklahoma, and this is a really large number. I just do not see them covering this really large number here. Uh, they're going to put this team to the test. Defensively, they have not been put to the test like this all year long. Marquise Brown, C.D. Lamb, the wide receivers for Oklahoma, they're going to stretch the field out. Uh I think Alabama is going to end up winning this game by a short margin. Oklahoma is going to cover the spread here. That's what I can give you on that one. I think of all the games that day, this one will be the most exciting one. And it would not surprise me at all to see Oklahoma pull out the victory here, but I don't think they're going to. I mean, I think Alabama will win the game, but I think it will be relatively close, high scoring, I think it's going to be exciting, and that will be one that you definitely should watch and keep an eye on. All right, guys, that's my picks and predictions for week number 18. We got through that one. Got one more week to go, and then uh, it's bye-bye until, uh, you know, we start talking about getting ready for uh, fall camp and all that stuff. You know, we'll get that cranked up soon, but... Uh, at any rate, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, if I didn't say it already, Merry Christmas. See y'all later. Peace. And I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Go Coach Boone.